Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Billings First Congregational Church on this fifth Sunday after Epiphany and Scout Sunday. I'm Pastor Lisa Harmon and I'm so glad that you're with us on this special Sunday, also a communion Sunday. If you are new or visiting, welcome. We would ask that you please sign our guest book that is out front. And for those of you online, welcome. We're so glad you're with us today. Drop us a message online so that we can properly welcome you as well. And as this is a communion Sunday, for those of us that are online, please gather your favorite beverage or food as we share in the sacrament of Holy Community, community or communion, the sacrament of Holy Communion today. Our announcements today, um, our next two Sunday seminars with Reverend Dwight Welch are Sunday, next Sunday, February 13th and the 27th at 9 a.m. in the Sweet Grass Room. We continue to move through the book Shameless, A Sexual Reformation by Pastor Nadia Bowles Weber, and we invite you into that wonderful study with Reverend Dwight Welch, again, next Sunday and the Sunday of the 27th. The last two sessions of meeting the Bible again for the first time are Wednesday, February 9th and Wednesday, February 16th at 7 p.m. in the Sweetgrass Room. It's just been a wonderful study and a wonderful time to be in community and it's a real joy to co-facilitate this with Walt Gulick. Thank you, Walt. And I'll be calling in as I'm going to be out of town. Um, for the next uh, week or so, and you have a guest preacher. His name is Reverend Tyler Amundsen, and he has got a really special service planned for you next Sunday. Are there any announcements that you'd like to bring before the congregation at this time? Okay. We begin our service recognizing that we worship on the unceded sacred homelands of Crow, Northern Cheyenne, Sioux, and Blackfeet people. This land is part of the Elk River watershed, and we honor the elders of this land, past and present, and we acknowledge the many, many generations that came before us. We repent of the violence and genocide perpetuated against indigenous peoples everywhere, First Nations peoples everywhere in the name of the church. May that lead us to right action, and may that lead us to worship in humility, responsibility, and grace. And as we begin our worship service, let us rejoice in God's majesty. Please stand in body or spirit for an embodied invocation this morning. So we'll be doing some arm movements here this morning. Creator, your love rises like the clouds. Yes, and you can raise your arms, rises like the clouds. Creator, your love is strong like the mountains. Creator, your love is deep like the seas. Creator, your love is given to everyone, people and animals. Holy One, your love is priceless, our greatest treasure. Amen. Let's do that one more time. Yes. Creator, your love rises like the clouds. Creator, your love is strong like the mountains. Creator, your love is deep like the seas. Creator, your love is given to everyone, people and animals, holy one. Your love is priceless, our greatest treasure. Amen. And now... As we bring ourselves fully to worship and to our spiritual practice, I ask you, how is it with your soul? Let's check in with Creator, however your spirit and your body wish. However you arrive, know that Beloved is delighted. So let us join in this moment of sacred silence and rest in God's presence. Maybe soften your gaze or close your eyes bringing a kindly attention to the breath, moving in you, moving in us this morning, the gift of the breath, the breath of life, that precious gift from God. Bring now your attention to your body, relaxing the body, relaxing the shoulders, lifting maybe through the heart center as we arrive fully in this sanctuary. 
and in the temple of our body, our mind, and our spirit. Filling on the in-breath with unending love and presence of the one in this sacred time of community and worship. Extending that grace out into the world on the out-breath. Staying with the breath and seeing if here and now in the stillness, in the silence, we might draw deeper into that sacred space where spirit resides, ever flowing, ever present. That spirit that has never left you. That today you might hear the whisper, feel the nudge, and receive nourishment from beloved mother, great spirit, Sophia, creator God, eternal and beautiful God, the one who births us and names us, grant us perspective, a holy centering of truth and humility and our belovedness, not too high that we fall away from you, from our need of you, our need of others, not too low that we fail to trust, to reach out for you, to reach out with you, in you, with you, for you, we are humble. For you, we are powerful, unique and alike, common and regal, priceless and dust. Grant us perspective, merciful one, a holy centering. Let no voice be too loud or too soft so that we may persevere in faith, in hope, in following and becoming. May we enter this time with an embodied awareness of the sacredness moving in and around us this morning. And all of God's people said, Amen. And now please join in our opening hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth, number 28, in our New Century Hymnal.
And now I have the pleasure of inviting, uh, where is he? There he is, Robbie White, Scoutmaster's Scout Master for our Boy Scout troop here, housed in Billings First Church, Troop 2. And we're going to sit on the stairs and we're going to invite our littles forward, like Charlie and JoJo and Brian and Leilin and Dorian. Is that Liam back there? And Liam, come on. Let's come up here and sit. Let me get my mask back on. You don't have to sit. You don't have to. You just, you know, just a little suggestion there if you want. Come, come on and join us. And I'm just so excited to have, Robbie, let me get you a microphone here for our time for Young at Heart. Because I'd like Robbie to tell us a little bit about the Boy Scouts today and share the good word with us. It, it should be on. Yep, I think we're... Try. Is this on? There yes. we go. Good morning, family. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. good. Today is Scout Sunday. Um, so the Boy Scouts, we were established in on February 8th, 1910. Wow. And every year, just before February 8th, we, on Sunday, is what we call Scout Sunday. Part of the duty that we serve in uh, Boy Scouts of America is we have a duty to God. We have a duty to others. And we also have a duty to ourselves. And we do all sorts of fun things throughout the year. We go camping. We learn skills. We do crafts. Um, we also do service projects throughout the community. Yesterday, we collected over 400 pounds of food from wow. Billings Food Bank and wow. over $300 of donations. Um, and that was just our unit. There's other units throughout, the, uh, throughout Billings. Um, the, the younger units are called Cub Scout Packs, which you guys would be eligible for. Um, and they do all sorts of fun things throughout the year. Wow. And in the summers, we go camping. Oh, how fun. And as Boy Scouts, we camp throughout the year. And we're hopefully going to go snow camping here this, uh, this month. So oh, I'm appreciating how, for that. How lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Does anyone have any questions for Robbie about the Boy Scouts? Yes. So You want to ask a question? Oh, I think. Go ahead, so this, Brian. This gentleman had a question. How big are the units? Yeah. Um, our unit, we're, we're troop. We're troop two. We're kind of older, older boys and girls. Um, we we start at about at about middle school and go up to high school. Yeah. The Cub Scouts they start as early as kindergarten wow. and go. Through. So we basically cover all the school ranges. As far as the size of the units, that varies. Some units are as small as like oh like half a dozen kids. What's Some that? units are as big as thirty or forty kids. Wow! Wow! And so you. If you would like to be part of it, you can choose which unit you want to be a part of. You don't have to go to a specific unit. And it's basically, see what, where you fit in. That's amazing. What a great service and ministry. Will you tell everyone how long you've been? This, the Boy Scout Troop 2 has been in our building? So Boy Scout Troop 2, we were established in 1916, making us the, probably the oldest unit here in Montana. So oh. we've been here for over 100 years. And I hope we stay here for a hundred more years. And we do, too. We do, too. I'm so grateful. Thank you for sharing that word with us. Any other questions for Robbie about the Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts? Oh, did you? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Jojo has just a little advice for us. I think in the back, um, in the play center, there's a back uh, play center area always at church. Thank you, Jojo, for that. And I just want to thank you. Thank you for your service. I also want to thank you and name this out loud, Robbie, um, at how um, flexible you are with us. Our church has grown in terms of our campus partners and activities and your, your troop and, uh, and your leadership with Brad and everyone else. Thank you for being willing to be in the Sweetgrass Room. You were in the choir room two weeks ago having an auction and having a, a great time. And, and so we thank you. And Robbie and his troop 
also have been very flexible with the um, emergency sheltering that we've been doing in Fellowship Hall, which is pushing over 900 um, night stays here in our building. And so we thank you for, for just making it all work here for us at the church, and I am grateful. Well, we just want to thank um, the church for continuing to support us. Always. I mean, it's just wonderful to have a place that, that is behind us and continue to, to forward our mission of uh, making kids have ethical and moral choices throughout their lifetime. And, uh, and this can't be done um, without a community. Yeah. And thank all the parents and all the family that help us. We, we really appreciate you guys. Well, right back at you. We appreciate you. Wonderful. And let's give Robbie a round of applause for the good word today for Troop 2. Yay! And, and now, children, Miss Joyce is in the back of the room. She's going to stand up. And she has got some great activities for Sunday school, so you can go with Miss Joyce. And thank you for coming up today. Yep, Joyce, raise your hand. There she is. There she is. And you're going to do some fun, I think, Valentine's things today. And uh, so, and she's got some snacks too. So if you'd like to go with Miss Joyce, you just head on down there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robbie. Again. Yes. Oh, it's my pleasure. Oh, you're wonderful. You can come share the pulpit with me any day. And now to our scripture readings today. We have a living psalm today. It is Psalm number 138, and it really resonated with me. And the psalm in the United Church of Christ on the UCC.org, um, excuse me, they have an area where a psalm is appointed for each week in the Revised Common Lectionary cycle, and it's reinterpreted in poetry and art as a reflection of God's work of justice and compassion in our midst today, in today's times. And I couldn't think of a more appropriate one for today and for the times that we are in. It's a psalm of resilience read by Naomi and Sarah Moyer. on this earth with my in my bare feet surrounded by seas and lakes mountains and fields the chill dirt below me reminds me of your refreshing presence and I give thanks to your name for your love forever journeys with me your presence is our temple your presence is our holy ground as we travel together on this side of heaven I remember that moment the moment I cried to you in anguish could I move from my harrowing rigidity? Could my mind exit the repeated loops of despair? Wondering if I could take another step, confused why this was happening to me. You answered me. I knew I wasn't alone. Your creation sung of your presence. You infused vigor into my soul so that I could take one more breath. Progress, progress one step forward, live one more day. I hope that someday, powers that be praise you, not just with their mouth, but with their entire being. I dream that they will listen to your words and open their spirits to your visions. May they know of your redeeming love. May the doorway into their hearts break open. Some will sing of your presence. Some will celebrate your righteousness. But the heart of the arrogant will turn in on itself and only see you from far away, or not at all. I know you, Mother God. I know you scoop up the marginalized into your loving arms. You lift their spirits and set them onto the pedestal of resilience. You've done this for me. When we walk into the midst, midst of trouble, in front of those who assault hearts, attack bodies, and batter souls, you, you will preserve me. You've gifted me with resilience. Your hand leads me into the next chapter. I will dwell, I will see your intentions for my life. 
and dwell in your steadfast love forever. Living Psalm 138, a psalm of resistance, was written by the Reverend Michelle Torgian, Senior Pastor, St. Paul UCC in Belleville, Illinois. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you, Sarah, so much. So beautiful. I know you, Mother God. I know you scoop up the marginalized into your loving arms. Just so beautiful. Our second scripture reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. We continue through this ordinary time in the season after Epiphany and through the Gospel of Luke, where Jesus offers some unsolicited fishing advice. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genereset, nope, Genesaret, got it right, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Simon answered, Rabbi, we have been working all night long and have not caught any fish. Yet if you say so, by your word, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish in their nets, the nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of these words of God's holy community. Amen. I do try to preach a very short sermon on Communion Sunday, and I'll do my best right now. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, O God, not to receive my thoughts, but to hear your voice. Meet us at our greatest point of need and till the soil of our souls. Amen. In our Wednesday night Bible study class this week, meeting the Bible again for the first time, we discussed wisdom literature and briefly touched on one of the writings in the Hebrew Bible, Ecclesiastes, and its overarching theme that all the pleasures and treasures in this life will turn to dust at some point, that overindulgence and pleasures, none of it matches knowing and walking with the most glorious of beings, our Creator. None of it leads to eternal life with our God. And regardless of our want to control, there is a natural order to things and to everything a season. To everything a season. Based on conversations I've been having within our congregation and within my clergy peer groups, with family and friends, it seems the season that we are in is exhaustion. There is an individual as well as a collective fatigue in our communities and in the world, not surprisingly after 23 months of pandemic. So when I studied our gospel reading for this week, I couldn't help but linger over Simon Peter and his fatigue as he was cleaning his fishing net. In our story, it's early morning and Jesus has just used Simon Peter's boat as a floating pulpit to teach folks along the shoreline. Peter and his mates had been fishing all night with no success, then worked from the early morning hours to clean their fishing nets. Why did they have to clean their fishing nets? It was vital to their livelihood. They had to clean the nets to remove things like dead fish, mud, and seaweed from off the bottom of the sea. This came on board the boat when the nets were retrieved. So as they're pulling the nets in, they're pulling in these seaweed and maybe rocks and mud and dead fish. If not removed, the debris would rot and stink. Additionally, scavengers might chew through the net looking for these scraps which would weaken the net, making it unreliable, ineffective, and useless to them that next day. 
Debris caught in the net would also hinder the ease of the movement through the water and make the net visible, which tips off the fish. The water in the Sea of Galilee was usually very clear, making it easier for fish to see the nets and the boats, and this is why most of the fishing was done at night in this region. So there they were, in the morning, cleaning, maybe making repairs, washing the fishing nets, frustrated that they had come out of the water empty-handed, looking forward to going home to get some sleep, when Jesus says to Simon Peter, I have a great idea. Let's take the fishing nets out and drop them way out there. I imagine Simon Peter looking at his fishing mate saying, he wants us to take the fishing nets and drop them way out there. Rabbi, we've been working all night, Simon Peter replies. Understand, these were not lazy anglers. These were exhausted ones, disappointed ones, no fish, and maybe lots of debris caught in their net. That's how I feel sometimes. In this very difficult time in our lives, maybe you do too, lots of debris caught in our net weighing us down, pandemic debris, political debris, climate chaos debris, our eroding democracy debris, and with this comes fatigue, emotional, physical, spiritual fatigue, a drag on the line, if you will, feeling bound so much, caught in our net. From where shall our help come? From where shall our hope come? Today, we look at the symbolism and the typology of this story, a story with a beautiful message, a story that comforts the exhausted. And today, it comes to us as Jesus wading in the water with us, Jesus, who does not send us where God will not go, meets us in the shallow and in the deep. Jesus wades in the water with us and says, Beloved, I know you're tired Come, bring your net into the deep, and God in creation will fill your nets to overflowing, so much so that it will take your whole community to wrap their arms around it all, and it will be abundant, full of life and nourishment for you and for all. Jesus waiting in the water with us, saying, bring your net clean and strong that you might be able to fill it to full. Friends, I have some work to do on my net. Maybe you do too. We must be very intentional in these times to clean our nets, clearing out the debris and the waste that comes with a world in pain, rejecting hatred and the sin of injustice as the prophet Amos de defined sin, fasting from social media and sound bites. Opting outside where Jesus wades in the water, inviting us to experience God in creation. We must be intentional, committed to giving so much grace to ourselves and to others. Steadfast in our practice to replenish and rest. Simon Peter was tired that morning and knew that daytime was not the best time to fish, especially with a carpenter. But he said, at your word, I will let down the net, his clean, mended, sturdy net. At your word, at your word, there was light. At your word, the sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets were created. At your word, life came to earth. At your word, creation is held together and sustained. At your word, empires rise and fall. At your word, this was Simon Peter's great statement of faith and in trust. Simon Peter experiences an epiphany of God mediated through Christ in beloved creation. And Simon Peter discovers new life and clarity in the deep possibility and provision. Jesus will not send us where God will not go. Let's work on our nets. Praise God. Amen. And now... We come to the offering. We come to a time where we bring our gifts before God. 
I want to thank you all for the many ways that you share your gifts and your passions and your talents with Billings First Congregational Church. We could not do the work of transforming hearts and minds, the good work of healing and restoring community without your support. We are so much more with your support. There are many ways to give, and I bet Morgan's going to put those on your screen. And now, the Boy Scouts, under the leadership of Brad, our precious Brad, will pass the plate. You can just pass them here, and you pass on this side. Perfect. stand and join in the doxology. Praise God, the source of life and birth. Praise God, the word who came to pray. O oh God of loaves and fishes of bread and wine, we bring before you our diversity of gifts, knowing that they will be multiplied for the benefit of many. God of resurrection, who makes all things new, accept our offering to both give and receive, trusting that there is abundance in togetherness and generosity in you. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. And now you, you may be seated. And now to the sacrament of holy community. Or, I can't say it. The sacrament of holy communion. I, I always say holy community. I guess, yeah, 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 it's community. We're going to, yeah, we're going to get started with a little song that's inserted in your bulletin. Sarah's going to help me move the communion table. people say and also with you and also with you turn to the people around you and tell them this news the peace of Christ is with you 
The peace of Christ is always with you. Always with you. To those online, the peace of Christ is always with you. Here we go. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of peace. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of peace. Listen. The body breathes in together and out. As close as breath, the holy is present with us. So we lift up our hearts, and the family says, we lift them up to God. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Holy Living One because it is the right thing to do, not only now but always, for always is when God is with us. I invite you to open both palms upward in the sign language forgive. We thank you, Creator God, that you formed us in your image. Now place your hands together in the sign meaning to be with. We thank you, Sustainer God, that you are with us. Bring your hands close to your face in the sign for prayer. Close your eyes and become aware of your breath on your hands. We thank you, God, for breathing into us the breath of life. Even when we have turned away, you have remained with us, close as breath. When we have been frightened, hesitant, still you are patient. You have time and again reached out your hand to free us, for your promise is steadfast. And so we open our eyes, our hands and our hearts to you, your will, for us as told to us through your prophets. We join in our voices together, praising you along with all who do, have ever done so, and ever will do so. Holy, holy, and the people repeat, holy, holy, holy God, holy, holy, holy God, everywhere we see your glory. Everywhere Everywhere we we see see your your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And the widest. And the widest. And the deepest. And the deepest. And the core of our beating. Core of our beating. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your son who came to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Listen, people. The Lord is with you. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and sat down at the table and ate with especially those others considered unworthy. Let us remind ourselves by saying, the Lord is present with us, with every one of us. The Lord Lord is is present present with with every every one one of us. Table of love. Come to the table of love. This is God's table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Come 
to the table of love. Come to the table of love. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table. Let us be a community of messengers, proclaiming and reminding each other and creation that Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Christ will come again and again. I invite you to stand in body or spirit and raise your hands in the ancient Christian posture of prayer. Loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the whole body of Christ, liberated by his witness, passion, and life. Be with us, Holy Spirit. Fill us so that you can move through us. And now I invite you to make a point of connection with those around you by laying a hand on a shoulder, holding hands, whatever is most comfortable to you. By your spirit, we are one with Christ, the host of this table. We are one with each other, and we lift to you the prayers on our hearts today. Would you please now say out loud or quietly, whoever or whatever is on your heart today in this sacred time of prayer and praise, remembrance and release. We pray for the family of Rayanne in Morocco. We pray for William DiManio. Nate Moyer coming home today. We pray for Nate as he makes his way back to his family. We pray for Tyler, who will lead us out next week. We pray for missing and murdered indigenous people. We pray for my husband, Mike, and myself as we leave on vacation. Creator, fill this space with your compassionate and healing love. Lift us in our heaviness and fill us with your joy. Let this joy be seen in us outside this place. Teach us your ways, the ways of Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And it is now with great thanksgiving that we come to the table of joy. I invite you to come pew by pew as we distribute the elements and ask that you take them back to your seat and we will share the elements together as a body in Christ. And as we come forward, let us lift our voices in song and praise. We'll go through the song until everyone has their bread. Sarah, would you like to help? That would be great. Come to the table of joy. Try to do bread, the bread of life. There's fish in there too. To the table of joy. This is the cup of covenant. Not yours or mine. Cup of covenant. To the table of joy. The Uh, yes, yes, um, that's gluten-free. Yes, yes. Come to the table of grace. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of peace. Come, 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 come to the 
Christ, remove your masks, take and eat the bread of life. Take and drink the cup of the new covenant. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the gift and the grace of your table for the gift and the grace of your nourishing and redeeming love in this sacrament. We have taken you into our beings and into our lives, your love and compassion, your gentleness and justice. In our gratitude, we pray that we might now be these things in the world. Thank you for your grace, which allows us to take up the journey of sharing bread wherever we may be on the road. Let us forever know your presence in front of us, beside us, within us, as we seek to be faithful. Amen. Amen. Sarah, thank you so much. Yes. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And now, would you please, she said almond, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's stand and body your spirit for our closing hymn, You Have Come Down to the lake shore, number 173 in your new century hymnal.
standing for the benediction. Beloveds, today we have claimed our place in the ecosystem of the Spirit, alive, connected, and emergent with grace. Let us go forth from this fertile ground, ripening the wisdom we have found through justice and care and compassion. And so may the blessing of our loving Creator replenish you today and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this communion Sunday and Scout, Boy Scout Sunday. So great.